We watched the movie with several inches of couch between us. I did the totally middle school thing wherein I put my hand on the couch about halfway between us to let him know that it was okay to hold it, but he didn't try. An hour into the movie, Augustus' parents came in and served us the enchiladas, which we ate on the couch, and they were pretty delicious. The movie was about this heroic guy, heroic guy in a mask who died heroically for Natalie Portman, who's pretty badass and very hot and does not have anything approaching my puffy steroid face. As the credits rolled, he said, Pretty great, huh? Pretty great, I agree. Although it wasn't. Really. It was kind of a boy movie. I don't know why boys expect us to like boy movies. We don't expect them to like girl movies. I should get home, class in the morning, I said. I sat on the couch for a while as Augustus searched for his keys. His mom sat down next to me and said, I just love this one, don't you? I guess I had been looking for the encouragement above the TV. A drawing of an angel with a caption without pain. How could he know joy? This is an old argument in the field of thinking about suffering. Thinking about suffering. And it's stupid, stupidity, stupidity, and stupidity and lack of sophistication could be, pr could be plumbed for centuries. But suffice but suffice, it, but suffice it to say that the existence of broccoli does not in any way, any way affect, any way affect the taste of chocolate. Yes, I said, a lovely stop. I drove Augustus's car home with Augustus riding shotgun. He played me a couple songs he liked by a band called the Hectic Glow, and they were good songs. But because I didn't know them already, they weren't as good to me as they were to him. I kept glancing over at his leg, or the place where his leg happened, trying to imagine what the fake leg looked like. I didn't want to care about it, but I did a little. He probably cared about my oxygen. Illness reperses. I'd learned that a long time ago, and I suspected Augustus had too. As I pulled up outside of my house, Augustus clicked the radio off. The air thickened. He was probably thinking about kissing me, and I was definitely thinking about kissing him, wondering if I wanted to. I'd kissed boys, but it had been a while, free miracle. I put the car in park and looked over at him. He really was beautiful. I know boys aren't supposed to be, but he was. Hazel Drake, he said, my name new and better in his voice. It has been a real pleasure to make your acquaintance. Ditto, Mr. Waters, I said. I felt shy looking at him. I could not match the intensity of his water blue eyes. May I see you again? He asked. There was an endearing nervousness in his voice. I smiled. Sure, tomorrow? He asked. Patience, grasshopper, I counseled. You don't want to. You don't want to seem over eager, right? That's why I said tomorrow. He said, "I want to see you again tonight, but I'm willing to wait all night and much of tomorrow." I rolled my eyes. I'm serious, he said. You don't even know me, I said. I grabbed the book from the center console. How about I call you when I finish this? But you don't even have my phone number, he said. I strongly suspect you wrote in the book. He broke out into that goofy smile, and you say we don't know each other.